Hi everyone, welcome to Socorro's webinar series, Coastal Observing in Your Community. My name is Abby Wakeley, Socorro's Director of Communications, and I will be facilitating and moderating the webinar. Socorro is hosting this webinar series to discuss, highlight, and raise awareness about coastal ocean observing activities in the Southeast US and beyond. Socorro is the regional coastal ocean observing system for South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. We are one of 11 that make up the NOAA-led U.S. Integrated Ocean Observing System, also known as U.S. IUS. Our mission is to sustain and promote observations that help keep you safe. This is a quick snapshot of our technology we support to accomplish our mission. Socorro would like to invite you to our annual meeting in Jacksonville, Florida on May 10th through 11th. It will be hosted at the Marine Science Research Institute at Jacksonville University. You see here, it will be a great event with interesting topics. We hope you can join us. Um, you can visit our website or you can scan the QR code below. Registration deadline is April 26th. All right, let's get to the reason you are here at the webinar. During the webinar, we highly encourage you to ask questions for the presenter or technical questions for me by clicking the tablet looking icon and typing in your question. I will pose them to the presenter after their presentation. We're recording this webinar today and we'll be posting the recording on the Socorro website. We are very excited to welcome Aspen Cook from Moat Marine Laboratory. She will be presenting on the Beach Conditions Reporting System. Aspen Cook is a Senior Environmental Specialist for the Environmental Health Research Program at Moat Marine Laboratory in Sarasota, Florida. She earned her Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science from the University of Phoenix in 2020 with a minor of Psychology and now leads community outreach and citizen science projects to protect public health by educating and engaging the public in environmental conversation and scientific research. All right, Aspen, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to promote you to presenter. So they are going to ask you what screen you would like to share. And I'll let you know when the screen shared. Perfect. I'm seeing it. I'm going to go on mute now. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Abby. And thank you everyone for coming today to listen to me talk about the Beach Conditions Reporting System. As Abby said, my name is Aspen Cook. I am the Senior Environmental Specialist in the Environmental Health Research Program at Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the Beach Conditions Reporting System. So Moat's Beach Conditions Reporting System, or BCRS as we like to call it, is a volunteer-based program that relies on trained beach ambassadors to provide detailed conditions reports for participating locations. Um, and those reports are displayed on the BCRS website at visitbeaches.org and the mobile app, which is bcrs Marine laboratory Our BCRS beach ambassador reports include important information like beach flag color, water temperature, water color, weather summaries such as UV index, air temperature, wind speed and direction, surf conditions such as surf height, surf intensity, and the presence of things like drift algae, jellyfish, rip currents, crowds, beach debris, and during times of red tide blooms and other harmful algal blooms, things like respiratory irritation and dead fish. The overall objective of the Beach Conditions Reporting System is to aid in protecting public health, as well as to enhance beachgoer experiences by providing users with information that can aid them in informed, informed decision making. So the BCRS was first developed by Moat Marine Laboratory back in 2006. And over the last few years, it has been rapidly expanding to provide more information for more locations than it ever has before. Currently, we have trained BCRS beach ambassadors reporting from over 70 locations along the coasts of Florida, Alabama, and South Carolina. Um, if you go to the BCRS website, you will notice that the most of our locations are based in Florida and most of them are on the Gulf Coast of Florida. That is because when the BCRS was first conceived back in 2006, it was done so specifically to um, communicate to the public effects of Florida red tide caused by um, the algal species Carinia brevis. And those things were water color, respiratory irritation, and dead fish. But as the BCRS has grown, we include more parameters now that are more you know, um, widespread through the regions, not just about Florida red tide. So we've started to expand our location reach into 
other regions along the Florida coast as well into um, other coastal states. So back in March of 2021, the BCRS underwent a complete redevelopment. And we did this so we could drastically improve the user interface, make the site easier to use, easier to understand, easier to navigate, as well as to include some new reporting parameters that we didn't have before and new system functions that we didn't have before. Some of those new parameters, and these are all highly requested by the public and by our users of the BCRS, were low and high tide times, sunset, sunrise times, the UV index, and a debris type. Um, prior to 2021, we only listed whether debris was present or not. We didn't say whether that was human debris, such as litter, or whether that was um, natural debris, such as sea foam or seaweed, something like that. So now we have that debris type parameter in there as well. And some of the new features that we added include community reporting feature and an education portal. So that new community reporting feature enables the public, anyone, anywhere, anytime, to submit reports to the BCRS that are much more simplified than what our beach ambassadors would report. Um, but that enables the public to directly contribute to that data collection and therefore contribute to scientific research and protecting public safety. Currently, our community reporting feature consists of three separate categories. And each of those categories has their own set of parameters or questions that it will ask. Um, we have inland conditions, which includes things like flooding, odors, chemical spills, dead wildlife, and water discoloration. And then we have beach conditions layer that uh, includes things like surf, debris, stingrays, crowds, and jellyfish. And then of course we have a red tide conditions layer that would include those three major factors of water discoloration, respiratory or eye irritation, and dead fish. And when people submit community reports, because they are not trained volunteers, there are prompts within those reports that will prompt them how to answer each question. Um, and then, of course, because they're not trained volunteers, we included a validation feature on those community reports that allow other users to either agree or disagree with the report. So if I was to go to the beach and I say, there are no dead fish here, everything's great. But then Abby came to the beach and she said, what is she talking about? There are dead fish everywhere. Um, she could disagree with my report. Or if she sees the same, that there are no dead fish, she could agree with my report. And that just adds a little bit of that QA, QC to those reports because these are not trained um, individuals making them. And then how those two reports are differentiated on the BCRS is um, in our legend, it's through different icons. We have a dark blue circle for trained beach ambassador reports and a light blue triangle for community reports. And as we build out the BCRS, we plan to add more layers and each of those layers will have their own icon as well to help differentiate between each set of data. Um, the education portal that I mentioned that was also added with the redevelopment in 2021 um, was added to further engage and inform the public. And we do that through uh, the use of infographics such as rip current safety, coral bleaching, uh, sea turtle conservation, ways to be a good beach steward. Um, we also have FAQs um, for frequently asked questions about the beach conditions reporting system itself, um, about Florida red tide, or about bacteria in coastal waters. And that includes both Enterococcus bacteria and Vibrio vulnificus bacteria. Um, and then we also have educational videos. Uh, we have one from NOAA, which is the Rip Current Survival Guide. Very important information. And then we also have three videos that were made in-house at Moat. Um, and those include information about Florida Red Tide, information about community science, what it is, how to get involved, and information about water quality and how to help. Some additional features that the BCRS has is a resources page. And this resources page is updated very regularly to include external links to important information, such as FWC's Red Tide Current Status website, where people can find um, recent you know, abundance information based on water samples taken by FWC. Um, they can find respiratory irritation forecasts in the NOAA um, HAB forecast link. Um, bacteria information and Florida Healthy Beaches program link. Um, we also have the Socorro and um, University of South Carolina House the Beach links in there. 
So there's a lot of information in the resources tab. If what you're looking for isn't on the BCRS, there's a way to find that. Um, BCRS users can access our reports through many different ways. Um, they can either go directly to the website or the mobile app and view the reports there, or they can sign up to receive twice daily emails that are sent directly to their inbox that have the most recent conditions displayed, or they can call our hotline, which is 941 Beaches, and listen to an automated list and choose which location they want to hear the report for. And because the BCRS is very much communication based, we also have a contact form. So anyone can reach out to us at any time, um, whether they have questions, whether they want to report something that they saw, whether they need you know, information for how to contact another organization, or they just want to tell me what a great job I've been doing, um, they can reach out to us in that contact form. And those emails come directly to myself and my colleague, Lauren, and we answer them within 24 to 48 hours. Now, we share a lot of data with the public. That's, that's our main thing, is keeping the public informed. But we also share all of this data with our partner organizations to enhance scientific research, to further public communication about the issues, and to help with forecasting and modeling. So all of our reports of dead fish, for example, go to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Um, or FWC, FWRI, um, they get all of our reports of dead fish and that kind of helps them convey that information to the public. They also get all of our reports of respiratory irritation as do uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And NOAA actually used BCRS reports of respiratory irritation coupled with um, cell concentration data from water sampling to build the GQS NOAA respiratory irritation forecast a few years ago. So our, our data was used to build that forecast model and our data is still shared with them to enhance that model. We also share all of our data with local governments such as you know, City of Sarasota, City of Naples, various counties, um, and that is to help with public communication and resource management and bloom monitoring when we have red tide blooms. And then we have um, agreements with the Department of Health Florida Healthy Beaches program to take in Enterococcus bacteria information from their system, relay that information to Socorro and University of South Carolina's House of the Beach program to assist with building out the um, or creating the forecast models, the nowcast models um, for the Sarasota area and other areas in Florida. Um, and then, uh, as you can see on the bottom in the pictures, um, on the left side is the House of the Beach website, and currently they have beach conditions reporting system reports displayed on their website. So if you were to click one of the little blue icons on the House of Beach website, it will pop up a little thing that says, you know, view the beach conditions reporting system here. And if you click on that external link, it takes you straight to our website and you can view that report. And we're gonna reciprocate that in the coming year with House of Beach reports. As you can see on the bottom on the right, we will be integrating those House to Beach reports as a new layer onto the BCRS. And then when you click on one of the green squares or whatever their icon ends up being, um, it will direct you straight to the House to Beach website. So we're kind of traffic sharing, data sharing, making sure that people can access the information they need to access quickly and easily. And then we always have data sharing partnerships in progress, but one of our main ones right now is with um, DEPs. CFAM program, which is the Southeast Florida Action Network, and they are really big into monitoring coral reefs and doing community science based around coral reef reporting and uh, off off coast or offshore, sorry, um, reporting and things like that. So we want to integrate their reports into the BCRS and same thing, they will integrate ours into their system. So again, just building a network of data sharing and if someone visits one site they can get linked to multiple sites from that site very easily to view whatever data they want to view to help keep them safe and healthy and have a good experience on the water some future expansion efforts that we're currently working on is growing geographically obviously the more locations the better we want to get as much information to as many people in as many areas as possible um, those include, of course, Florida, uh, areas in Florida, as well as other coastal regions like Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, even, you know, further um, west and further north from that. 
um, and then also incorporating more data and more resources into the BCRS, such as the bacteria information layer from House the Beach I was just talking about. Some real-time telemetry data is another thing we're working on. We would like to get some real-time water quality data kind of integrated into the BCRS, coral reef reporting, um, live beach cams. I think that would be really cool. So that's something else we're gonna be <clears throat> implementing as well in the future. And of course, again, the main goal is just to synergize all of those data resources um, facilitate data sharing across multiple agencies and platforms to promote better understandings of impacts on local and regional areas from Florida red tide or any other environmental event um, and aid with that local state and federal resource management and mitigation. So if anyone's interested in checking out the BCRS, you can either go to visitbeaches.org or you can scan the QR code on the screen right now. And of course, special thanks to all of our partners. As you see on the bottom, it would not be possible to do what we do without all our partners. So um, I think that is all I have. So if anyone has questions, I would love to hear them. Thanks so much, Aspen. What a great and uh, presentation. And you can stop presenting if you want. We did have one question come in um, by Hannah. Is the BCRS currently utilized by any sea turtle or shorebird monitoring programs? And if not, would you encourage these groups to participate in the BCRS? Yes, um, we currently don't have anything like that. What we're trying to do with our community reports, hold on, I'm still trying to switch this to you, Abby not technically inclined um there we go did i do it okay cool yeah <laughs> okay so one of the things that we're planning on doing um in the next year is building out the community reporting section because right now i'm sure you saw you can report you know dead injured sick wildlife but it's really just a yes or no question so it doesn't do a whole lot of good if that information is not going to somebody immediately. So one of the things we're working on doing very soon is having an option that if someone was to go on a community report and they were to say, you know, oh, I found a stranded sea turtle or, you know, whatever, um, it would, if you said yes to that question, it would stop you and tell you, you need to call this agency immediately or contact this person immediately. And then we would have it set for, um, regional contacts or you know statewide contacts that would be based on your location from where you're submitting the report i'm not sure if that answers the question i think you did a great job and hannah if you want to follow up in the chat and ask and i just put your email in the chat because folks um, were looking to contact you so mitch i'm going to send it to you privately too um, thanks for asking for that and then we have a question from Deborah. What is your biggest challenge in the day-to-day -day operation of BCRS? Hmm, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> my biggest challenge, I think, is when like technical issues arise because I, I'm not a technical person, so I have to rely heavily on our web development team for things like that. And that's challenging for me because I want to be able to fix it. <laughs> Aside from that, I would say um, getting volunteers, getting volunteers is always a challenge and retaining those volunteers and having those volunteers report on a very regular basis. That is always a challenge, always, always a challenge. But we have amazing volunteers. We have some very amazing volunteers. So I guess it's not that challenging. <laughs> Yes, uh, getting people engaged is always the hardest part, but always the most rewarding. Um, this is a question similar to the beach um, ambassadors. Uh, lots of kudos coming in, but how do you train the ambassadors to identify rip currents and how do you validate their skills or reporting? That is a wonderful question. I don't think I covered that at all. So our, um, our trained beach ambassadors, the way they are trained is that they do an online training module. The module takes about 30, 45 minutes, um, and it consists of four separate videos that they have to watch, and then they have to answer questions after each video um, to make sure that they were paying attention and they understand you know, the content and things like that. And then we also supply them with a reporting guide that will have like visuals 
for them to kind of use if they need to help identifying rip currents. They can look at these visual, you know, things and say, oh yes, this is a rip current, or oh, it is not, or surf height is another really hard one to judge sometimes. So visuals kind of really help, and so they have that guide to kind of help them. Um, a lot, a lot of our volunteers are lifeguards or other beach or park staff, so they're already very familiar with things like rip currents. Um, we do have volunteers that are not in those type of positions that are just you know individuals that live or work in the area um and it's just you know like i said giving them those visuals and helping them to recognize what they're looking for and if there's ever an issue somebody will let us know like if they don't if they don't know how to identify it properly they will ask for more training there's a wonderful video from noah that is very helpful too um and if if they ever report incorrectly somebody will let us know <laughs> great thank you so much um another question that has come in do you plan to include reports of sargassum on the beach it's a hot topic on the news oh my gosh it really is um so we currently have that drift algae parameter which i think kind of encompasses sargassum but we would like to add a specific parameter just for that especially in highly affected areas like the florida keys for example they have a much bigger problem with sargasm than they have let's say florida red tide so it would be more helpful for them to have a parameter specifically for that than it would for them to have parameters for you know respiratory irritation and dead fish so it is definitely something that is is on the list to look at adding in the future Great, thanks so much, Aspen. And to follow up on the rip currents, are there any thoughts about including the rip current forecast from the National Weather Service? Yes, actually we've been in communications with some um, organizations on the East Coast that use that quite often. And so we're trying to hammer out details for, I guess like a, a multi-agency understanding you know like this is how we're going to report it this is how it's going to be worded because we don't want any confusion across agencies or across platforms across websites um whatever um and that that's kind of a problem right now so we're trying to hammer out details for how everyone is going to agree to do it but yes that is also something that we are looking into great thanks so much aspen a um, lot of exciting updates. And then one question that has come in is, are there any legal liability issues surrounding the use of info on the tool by the public? Nothing specific in mind, just curious if it's come in com uh, conversation since it is a citizen science beach ambassador program. Yes, um, that's a hard one. We try to communicate to people exactly what this is. You know, this is something that is volunteer based. It is based on observations, trained observations when it comes to the beach ambassadors, untrained when it comes to the community reports. So I think it, it, it comes down to communicating it correctly. You know, as long as people understand this is not quantitative information that has been measured in some way somehow um, if these are based on volunteer observations um, then there's not much of an issue i've never run into an issue thanks aspen um, another question from ashley how has the marine debris information been used so far is the data shared with any of the partners you mentioned I'm so glad you asked that because no, and I would love for it to be. I really want to utilize that information. I'm sure many of you are aware of like the, the different apps like the NOAA Marine Debris Tracker and like Clean Swell and things like that. And I would love, love to be able to implement something like that into our beach debris parameter or sharing that data. We just haven't gotten to that point yet, but I would love for that to happen. Currently, no, it's not shared with anyone to answer your question. Sorry. That's good to know. Um, would it be a piece of data that you could share possibly? Absolutely. 
All right, so Ashley, if you're interested in the data, reach out to Aspen. Um, she will reach out by email and um, lots of folks saying kudos, very powerful tool and more encompassing than most apps that they've seen. Thank you. Uh, a question, a great question has come in from Mitch. If they report a fish kill, do you also have to report the fish kill to the FWC fish kill hotline or will it, will it be automatically reported? I love that you asked that. So a few years ago, yes, I had to manually input every single one of those into the Fishco hotline. Now we've established another way of data sharing. Um, FWC, FWR, they have a, well, they will have, we're building out a new one right now. They, ha they have one currently, but we're building out a new one. It's like a, a data download API that they can use to get the most recent data. The one that we're building out right now will give them a more historical view so they can download as much for as long as they want um, but right now they're just getting like the most recent things and then i also share with them um summaries multiple times a week of what we've been seeing on the bcrs so they're always very aware of what we're seeing so that kind of um you know negated the need to to have to input it directly into their fish kill hotline every time because now i i talk to the person who runs the fish kill hotline um, multiple times a week and he knows what's going on they all know what's going on great thanks so much um it's nice that you can just put it in one spot and it will be reported out somewhere else like you oh, said yeah. sharing data <laughs> so important <laughs> so important um, so another question from Ralph, um, would you be interested in including the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, um, Office of Resilience Coastal Protection, post-storm beach erosion conditions? They evaluate the beach conditions statewide after every coastal storm. Hmm. I, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know this existed. Hi, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I think that that would be really a really cool thing to integrate. Because after Ian, we had so many inquiries, so many inquiries about, you know, like, what is, what is it like in this area? Or can I visit this area? Is this area open? And then we had a, a big lag in reporting for certain areas, particularly Lee County and Collier County that were the hardest hit, you know. Um, and people had a really hard time understanding why the reports hadn't been updated in a month or two or three. And I'm like, well, <laughs> they got hit pretty hard, you know. So something like that might actually be extremely useful in those situations. So that is something, yes, we can definitely talk further about that. I'm interested. I'm very intrigued. Great. Thanks, Aspen. And then um I had a question. How do you become a beach ambassador? Is there like hours of training? Do you have to meet in person? Um, what's the parameters there? Well, pre pre COVID, pre pandemic, um, there was in person training. Um, post COVID, uh, we're doing the online training module now. So if anyone's ever interested in being a beach ambassador, they just reach out to me either directly or through the contact form on visitbeaches.org. And they just say, you know, hey, like, how, how can I become a beach ambassador? And I provide them with all of the information that they're going to need. Um, and then if they if they are, in fact, interested, then I will provide them with the training module and get them set up with an account because you do need a, a specific account to be able to report as a beach ambassador. Um, not so much for community reports. You just have to sign in with Google, Facebook or Apple ID. But to be a beach ambassador, like I have to create your account and give you your login. Um, so it, yeah, you would just have to contact me and I can give anyone that is interested that information. Great. Thanks so much, Aspen. And then to follow up on the, um, coastal restoration efforts, has any of the data from your tool been used to assess the success of any coastal restoration efforts? Not, not to my knowledge. Um, this existed well before I came to Moat, so, but not to my knowledge. I can double check on that, but I don't believe so. Great, thanks Aspen. And then to follow up on um, information sharing, Dave Jones was asking if um, 
House the Beach is a web service, if it would enable uh, mapping and GIS mapping, as you said, like the real-time data layer, is that something that will be happening? And I can connect you and Dave online too. Okay, um, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a little confusing for me too, but he's wondering if Sakura provides this data as a web service and through our portal, I do not think that we link our, um, the House the Beach reports through our data portal. You have to go to House the Beach. And then yes. they're curious, um, could you change the map to be like a real-time data so you can pull in the buoys and things like that? I know you mentioned it. Is that something you're planning in the future? Um. No, okay, so the first thing, I think you have to go, like you said, straight to House the Beach. I think it's housethebeach.org. I don't think it's linked on Sakura's site, but um, it may be, I could be wrong about that. Um, as for switching over to like, you know, GIS and, and the real time stuff, I don't think we're gonna do that because the way the BCRS is built, it makes it extremely customizable. Um, like uh, ArcGIS, limits us a lot in what we can do on it from my understanding again not a web developer um <laughs> but the way that we have it set up now it is extremely customizable and allows us to really do just about anything so how we were going to incorporate that real-time data for like the you know, telemetry and the water quality and, and the bacteria and all of that is much like what house the beach has done with the bcrs reports you know it's just to link directly out to them like there will be an icon on our map if you click on that icon you get a pop-up and in that pop-up is a link that takes you to their site so then that way each agency each organization is responsible for collecting and maintaining their own data sets but we just share those we just make each data set more visible i guess Great, thanks Aspen. And I totally butchered that question. So Dave, if you wanna follow up um, with Aspen, her email's in there and I can follow up as well. So apologies there. And I had um, another question. So is this a web-based app or are you able to download it like on your iPhone? Both. Both, oh wow. Very both. Nice. Yes, so you, it's a web-based app in the sense that if you go in your web browser on your mobile phone type in visitbeaches.org like it'll bring up like a mobile version of the website that is very similar to the app but then if you are going to use it a lot and you prefer to have a, a, a mobile app on your phone you can download it from you know google play or the apple app store or you can use it on your laptop it works on every platform <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome thanks aspen all right so i am not seeing any more questions in um i want to put the link to how's the beach in the web in the chat so folks can visit it and i highly encourage you to use it and become um, a beach ambassador as asman said they're always searching for more help and um one more question that has come in how much does the phone-based web app have to be updated is it a high maintenance product the entire thing is high maintenance <laughs> the whole thing the whole thing is high maintenance um i wouldn't say that the the mobile web is any more high maintenance than like the desktop web you know like it is it's all high maintenance <laughs> understood yeah we would love to go into the phone apps but it's um little unknown territory so maybe we should talk offline about the benefits of that and the pros yes, and cons definitely <laughs> definitely we can do that thanks aspen and um so everybody has aspen's email address i sent the link to um the bcrs reporting system visit beaches.org very easy to remember download it on your phone and reach out to aspen if you want to become a beach ambassador Thank you so much, Aspen, for spending your lunch hour with us. And thank you to the attendees for such an engaging Q&A session. So as, as, as I said before, if I butchered your question, please follow up. And um, really appreciate this, Aspen, and look forward to engaging. I'm going to download it on my phone and go to the beach and try to <laughs> verify some information, community reports. <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I use it all the time. Anytime we're going, I'm like, okay, let me check the. Let me check it real quick. Let's see which one has the least amount of people at it today. That's my big thing. I'm always looking at the crowds parameter. <laughs> yes, exactly. Especially now, Florida is, has way too many people. We're not gonna talk about that right now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you so much, Aspen. You guys enjoy the rest of your lunch hour and lots of kudos coming in. Thank you all. Have a good one. Thank you all so much. Bye.